Hi there. Let me take a few minutes and go through the answer to this second question, the dwarf fruit tree question, and show you how the simulation demonstrates which blocking scheme is the best. So in part A, you're supposed to choose the better blocking scheme, and it is blocking scheme A. So explaining your answer, remember that in a block, we want a group of comparable units. So all of these squares, all of these plots are comparable because they are all next to the forest. So all of them will say, share the same effect from the forest. Maybe the trees and the brush and the forest actually take nutrients away from these plots that are closer to the forest. So maybe these plots aren't quite as fertile, where these plots that are farther away um, don't suffer from that effect. So dwarf fruit trees planted here may actually be more productive. The point is these are comparable because all of these plots are all equally affected by the forest. These are also comparable on the right because they aren't affected by the forest. This does not happen in blocking scheme B. Understand these four upper plots are not all comparable because two are against the forest and two are not. Same with down here, these two plots within the second block are against the forest and these are not. Blocking scheme B does not have two blocks where all of the plots are comparable within the blocks. That's fundamentally the problem. So take a look. Um, let's actually look at the data. So in class, we simulated this question. So remember, we assumed that the productivity of the dwarf fruit trees, the new variety was 53 pounds per tree, and the old variety was 47 pounds per tree, per tree. So the actual difference between them is six. So by planting fruit trees in these plots, so how likely are we to detect a difference of six? Well, take a look. The first thing we did was not block at all. We just did a simple random sample. So right here, this histogram represents the actual differences that were observed in the over 100 simulations that all of you did in class. So if we trace this, notice something special has happened right here. So this bar in the histogram, this represents all of the actual sample values that were observed in our simulation. There were 11 of them where the difference between the new and the old, new production minus old productivity, was uh, essentially between six and seven. So the truth is right here. But understand there's a lot of sampling variability here because there were many people that got sample differences that were above the truth, and there are many people that got sample differences below the truth. Now notice, though, the truth is in the middle. So that's good news, at least. We know where to go. We know where to find it. Now this is using a simple random sample. But in that simple random sample, what we were doing was not blocking. We were literally planting four new trees in a simple random sample of these eight plots. And then the four old style tree, old variety tree, were going in the remaining plots. So we weren't blocking. Notice what happens, though, when we look at the sample differences that we got from blocking scheme A. Something very distinct happens. Take a look. This time, again, the truth is still six. The truth is still here in the middle. But notice, these sample differences are much more tightly packed together. So, of course, we had a little outlier here, and that is typical. That can happen. There's, there's no problem with that. So understand, though, that it is much more likely that we're going to get a sample result that is closer to the truth. These sample differences are not as spread out as they were in the simple random sample. So this was using blocking scheme A, where we are doing our best to control for the effect of the forest. Now look what happens with blocking scheme B. 
Again, in blocking scheme B, notice that in the middle we find the truth, but once again, because we're not controlling for the effect of the forest, there is a lot of sampling variability. Some people got results that are very high or very low compared to where the truth is. Our sample results are much more compact. In general, they're centered around and much closer to the truth using blocking scheme A rather than using blocking scheme B or using just a simple simple random sample that uses no blocking. So to answer part B of the question, even though students have decided to block, they must randomly assign the varieties of trees to the plots within each block. What is the purpose of this randomization in the context of this experiment? Well, something to think about, there is going to be random variability from plot to plot that isn't explained by the forest. So, for instance, maybe there is uh, an underground stream that runs through some of these plots. So it may just be that whether they're against the forest or not, there may be some plots where maybe there is more water available. And so, in fact, maybe trees that are plotted on those particular locations may grow better. There is random variability amongst all of these these different plots and randomization of the trees to those plots, those eight plots, controls for this, these characteristics that we have not already considered. So that random assignment is very, very important. So I hope this explanation has been helpful.